Hey guys, uh, we got another project in front of us now. Uh, this is as near as I can tell a 1974 uh, Cub Cadet Model 149. You'll hear me probably call it a 14.9 or just the 14 uh, because in the family we have four of these tractors. I have a 1650 and my dad has, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the other model numbers, but uh, we have a 10 horsepower manual transmission and then a 12 horsepower uh, hydrostat. <coughs> Both of mine are hydrostats. Um, both mine are wide frames, so if you don't know these tractors at all, I'm not going to try and bog you down a lot there. But uh, if you've never seen one of these old school Cubs and you're familiar with like modern garden tractors or modern lawn tractors, these are going to look really weird to you. If you are familiar with bigger tractors, these are going to look really hilariously small to you. <laughs> they, uh, they operate in the middle ground between... Um, like a big tractor and a garden tractor. That's why they're Cub Cadets. They're the they're li the little version of um, IH Cubs of the time, I think. Uh, but anyway, so his garden tractors are super overbuilt, and his uh, lawnmowers are super overbuilt. But if you're used to like actual equipment, these are hilariously still underbuilt for you. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's uh, four main things wrong with it right now that are preventing me from beginning mowing season. And I'm going to try to tackle this series of videos a little more episodically and hopefully a little more concisely. It's uh, because, you know, I, I don't know that people want to watch three hours of me rambling about this thing. But uh, the big problem right now, you'll see right there, that's where it was parked, where the back of it was parked over the winter. It's absolutely soaked in transmission oil. Um, <clears throat> there's the bucket I had under it over the winter. And it's got you know a few tablespoons in it. It looks like most of it missed and ended up in the on the cardboard box. But uh, <clears throat> what that is is there's a uh, actually give me just a sec here. Okay, so what I believe to be the issue with this guy at the moment, despite how grass covered and everything this is, <laughs> uh, this is actually the suction tube for the hydrostatic drive and for the hydraulic system. This thing does have a hydraulic ram to pick the deck and implements up and down and stuff. And I uh, did something stupid last year, and I put a floor jack on this thing and cracked it so it started leaking. So this is a new one. And uh, I want to say the end that uh, goes in the transmission housing has a compression fitting on it. And or I might have this backward. We'll, we'll know when I get it apart. And the other end goes in, like threads into a fitting. But there's another fitting that screws into the transmission that's sealed up with an o-ring so it's like a compression fitting on a fitting you know it's it's weird but anyway i just had a nightmare of a time getting this thing to not leak and as you can tell i lost that battle and i think it's because when i was tightening this line up to put it on i disturbed that o-ring you know that that 50 year old o-ring in there and might have ripped it or something um, normally i would replace everything like that but it seems like every time i do I make myself more work. You know, this O-ring wasn't leaking before, so I'm not going to touch it. Well, this time, looks like I bit myself. So, what I need to do is, first of all, clean all this grass and crap off of it. Then I'm going to crack this back, fitting loose, back at the transmission, and let the oil drain out of it. Uh, the only other way to drain the oil out of one of these things is to take the rear housing cover off, the, the back cover of the thing. And I also had a nightmare getting that thing to quit leaking last summer, too, when I was going through this. So I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> right now it doesn't leak. And this pipe has to come off anyway, so I'll just crack it loose right there and get the oil draining after I get this cleaned up a good bit. Okay, now that everything's not covered in filth, you get a little better idea what's going on. I've got that broken loose, so it's starting to drain. And what I think is up is that uh, top fitting, which I th is, this is a, the pipe is threaded, or it's got a, a nut on it a collar on it then it goes into another threaded fitting that I'm pretty sure is um, like a n line or a n thread uh, that threads into that case and I think the other side of that big a n type fitting it's got an o-ring on it and I think I ripped that o-ring or something when I was tightening this guy up last year and then the other end of it is just a compression fitting on the other end of that line so once we get it drained, and you'll see I'm taking my time here, I don't want to make a huge mess. This thing holds like a gallon and a half oil or some stupid amount of oil. So I actually have two of these little pails lined up to catch it. But anyway, when we get that uh, all drained out, I'll have to pound the 
carefully pound the compression ring off the pipe, get put a new one on, hopefully have a new O-ring in stock. If not, it's a trip to the hardware store and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, here's, here's what's going on. I don't know, guys. I can't tell necessarily what you're going to be able to see. But the O-ring itself doesn't look too bad. It, it actually seems fine. It immediately detect a tear in it. But I do see a whole bunch of dirt in those threads. And I don't think that happened on the way out. So my guess is that this has been leaking. Or I, I should say my hope is that this has been leaking. Because <laughs> if this isn't it, I really don't know. And also, there's... Uh, this end of the thing is kind of all scored up. Uh, it looks like kind of rusty. Um, you know, that could be a sealing problem too because it's a, you know, like a face flange seal there. You know, these are just like brake lines or anything else. So I am going to try to clean that thing up and get the old O-ring off of it and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I don't, uh, didn't find any smoking gun on the O-ring. But if you take a look real carefully, I'll see if I can show it. Uh, it's in focus or not. The one on the right is the old one. <clears throat> and you can see it's got kind of a, uh, a square profile. Stop shaking the camera for a second. So it's got some compression set in it. So maybe just being disturbed a little bit made it unhappy. Uh, there's a new one on the left just out of a universal o-ring kit and hopefully that guy works for me because that's what we're going to do. Well, like I said, got everything cleaned up about as well as I can so we're going to have to give it a try and see what happens. So this stuff is about as surgically clean as I can get it. Um, new compression fitting on. The other end all cleaned up too. Just got to stuff it back in and snug everything up. And I, th I think maybe that's what I did uh, wrong last time, is maybe I just crushed that O-ring by trying to crush that compression sleeve. So we'll see. I'll, I'll try and put a backup wrench on it this time and just take it easy and, you know, always tighten more later, I guess, which is what I thought last summer too, but it didn't go that way. So we'll see what happens. So there's our setup. I've got a nice clean sheet of cardboard under it. Nice clean paper towel sitting on top of that that I might reposition a little bit. And the tube's tightened up and I'm sure I put enough oil in it to, uh, you know, get up past the bottom of this fitting. I'm sure I did. So if we come back tomorrow and this is dripping, then I know that compression fitting is leaking. Um, if it isn't, what I'll probably do, because I have many things to do here, is I'll probably put a little more in it and make sure this is completely submerged and all that and maybe get like some head pressure on it or whatever. And we'll see if it leaks then. So, uh, and just kind of keep slowly filling it or whatever or fill it in a couple batches as I do other things to the tractor. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really gun shy about uh, this thing not leaking because I've had bad luck with it. <laughs> so, we'll see. Okay, so it's the next day. I don't see any signs of leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more oil in it and keep an eye on it.